Welcome to the NoBS Tour of the CMMI for Development. This is version 1.3. This is a piece of a larger course, and so today what we're going to do is look at working with requirements. And whenever we start to get requirements, since we build things as engineers, all construction projects start with a message from the customer, usually a need of some kind or a context. That points to two activities we have to pay attention to that form the basis of our projects. The first activity is to develop the requirements for the product that we're going to build for the customer, and the second one is to manage the changes to those requirements as the environment changes, the customer changes his mind, or so things get clearer along the way. And we know that's symbiotic, it occurs all the time. So step one, developing the requirements, really involves most of the time meeting with a customer to understand the context, the product that he's looking to build, and to get a build a relationship with the customer so that we can very quickly get um, the information we need. The model has two practices related to that. The first one is to elicit customer needs and the second one is to transform those needs into customer requirements. From there we can do our technical work. We start now to develop our product requirements, functional, non-functional requirements, and then we start to develop or allocate those by component or feature of the product itself. And then lastly we make sure that the interface requirements are in place, clear and understood. From there, we start then to go into a slightly validation cycle for the customer. We may develop some operating scenarios, wireframe, screen designs, whatever it may be to make sure we, we understood what the customer meant. We want to define the functionality and quality attributes, um, acceptance criteria for Agile if you like. We may want to analyze requirements to make sure the set is necessary and sufficient to meet the customer need, to balance those requirements by priority or importance, and then to validate the set of requirements to make sure it will actually work in the operating environment we're designing the product for. And the output of that is a requirements document of some kind in some form. Once we have the requirements document in place and we start to build our we have to build the software, now we have to deal with managing the requirements changes. The model addresses two prerequisites for that. The first prerequisite for managing the change is to understand the requirements and the second one is to commit to, commit to those requirements by those who actually build the product. Once we have those two th things, then we can manage the requirements changes along the way and make sure that we have bi-directional traceability from the require across the requirements set because as any change might have an effect on another part of the component of the product that we're building, we want to make sure that every item is traceable up and down and then sideways from module to module as needed. And just like dealing with bi bi-directional traceability in the technical set of requirements, other project artifacts are important as well. So maintaining the alignment between requirements and other project artifacts is just as important as maintaining traceability within the requirements themselves. So that could, could include plans, schedules, designs, code, tests, or any other artifact that's, that's based on requirements. And that's really it for the model, two pieces. Develop the requirements and the 10 practices in the model that address those, and then the five practices that deal with managing the changes to requirements. Pretty much common sense for most of us. So that's what we have for today. The CMMI deals with working with requirements, and this is the No BS Tour of CMMI.